Hello, people of the world watching videos on the internet that have to do with cars. Welcome to this, the continuation of my 1974 RA21 Toyota Celica that will soon house this 2UZ Toyota Tundra V8. In the last video, I said I was gonna get back to work on the engine. If you missed it, up above my head is a link to that video, actually. You guys thought I was gonna say something like a guide to sharpening your possum's feet. Okay, so these are the used valve covers I bought. Now I got multiple valve covers for 2UZ, and I just need to make two of these look brand new again. And I cannot use my homemade vapor blaster for this, like I did on this one, which required me to then have to drill out the baffle to clean all the glass media from the inside out. Whole reason why I bought a second set of these valve covers is because I did not want to drill out the baffles and put hardware on the inside of my engine. I know it's not the worst thing, but I'm gonna start off with a citrus base degreaser, something mild. What I don't wanna do is stain this because I don't know if this is just pure aluminum or if it's got magnesium in it. And if it does, it's gonna turn really dark. So that did pretty much nothing. And you can see this has got stains on it already, so I need to brighten this. This is actually fallout cleaner for brakes. And sometimes it can pull off miracles depending on what kind of stains are on something. So this is after the citrus degreaser and then some fallout brake cleaner. It's brighter, but still not good. This is wheel and tire cleaner. It's a little bit more corrosive. I'm gonna kind of coat it evenly in case it does try to stain it. It kind of worked, but not what I'm looking for. I'm gonna use some aluminum brightener. This stuff is like a mild acid. All right, I like this. Whatever that old stain was, it didn't really do anything for that. I have one more harsh substance I can use on today's episode of Breaking Stupid. Muriatic acid. I don't want this on my skin to say the least. Or on the valve cover for any length of time. Yeah, that stuff's pretty strong. Essentially, it's the equivalent of getting a deep tissue chemical peel for a robot. It's doing the same thing to this valve cover. It's literally just burning off the top layer of it. It kind of worked. Also, FYI, this was a valve cover I didn't intend on using on anything. My final secret weapon. This is a plastic bristle brush and scrub. And before you say it, yes, you can also use oven cleaner, but downside is this can turn the valve covers or whatever aluminum parts you're cleaning black if you leave it on there for too long and they're mixed with other compounds of metals. The valve cover on the side without the PCB valve, the inner baffle looks brand new again. It cleaned up nicely. And the end result, neither one of these saw muriatic acid. This one did. And you can see how much darker and it lost its sheen overall compared to the other two. These are not up to standard yet to go on this engine. Let's do some other stuff in the meantime. This right here is a genuine Toyota part. I guess you could argue it's a genuine Lexus part. Plate, oil pan, apple. That's it, that is it. Water pump, timing cover, water pump. Oh, I have so many parts. Valve covers. The eight bolts that go in the rear of the oil pan are the same between a 1UZ and a 2UZ, however, these right here on the 1UZ pan, as well as these ones up inside here by the sump, are exactly one size smaller, like a M6 versus a M8. In case you're not up to speed, the bed plate and the oil pan on this engine are from a Lexus LS400 because it's front sump. So I have to use a mixture of hardware from an LS400 and the Tundra to make this oil pan work. I hear a power stroke, that sounds like a Charlie. Called it. What is that? This is Hot Rim's chrome wheel cleaner. But see how it's got like that marbling? Yes. I think it's like artifacts of the die cast process. Cause the mold, like for die casting, the mold's like, I don't know, 250 Celsius-ish? Which is hot, but it's way colder than molten aluminum. So when they pour it in there, you get these, and it's injected like under high pressure. So there's lots of turbulence. So it, sometimes you get these like surface discolorations. I was telling Charlie that I've literally thrown every single chemical I had at those valve covers and he wanted to give old mag wheel cleaner a shot, so. Foam. Yeah, that's like the old mag wheel cleaner that they stopped selling. Discontinued. 
See, that's what the muriatic acid did, but oh, it yeah, turned it... Oh, yeah, it stinks like the old Maglio cleaner. It turned it gray. Is that the, the gray one? Yeah, this is the dark gray one. Ah, uh ah. -huh. Yeah. But is that from the muriatic acid? And also, I sanded that with steel wool right there. Just for the sake of comparison, this section of the oil pan, not down here, because that's modified, but the original portion up here, see how it has that marbling effect because it's made out of cast aluminum? Well, it matches the valve covers. So that's OE, that's an OE finish. I think I, think I need to realize that that's what it should look like. I need to drill these out. I hope you appreciate me moving the camera around 6,000 times while I'm trying to work because I never get anything done because of this. There you go. I just barely have to drill it out like a tiny bit. I probably could go a little bit bigger just so I don't crack it. Yeah, that's better. Because this area is super thin, for obvious reasons, I need to be careful so I don't crack it. Now the inner holes. And because I know someone's gonna ask this question, this is just the bed plate, not the actual oil sump. The sump bolts to this piece and that is what holds the oil. Just in case there's any little burrs, especially because this is the gasket surface that bolts up to the underside of the 2UZ engine block. And lastly, and most importantly, I need to clean up a little extra space for the flange around the bolt heads to sit, so that way when they're tightened, it doesn't accidentally crack the pan. I'm so glad I saved this. Hardware from when I did the STI TS upgrade parts on the Subaru, and it just so happens it's the exact size I need for the oil pan. I don't know if I wanna use this little stick. I don't think I need to. following afternoon and I have been scrubbing parts literally all morning since I got here. I filled the valve covers with hot degreaser and let them sit in the sink overnight so that way all the gunk underneath could liquefy. And then I sprayed out the underside with brake clean, pressurized air, and then a hot bath of water continuously flowing until there's nothing but clear liquid coming out. Finally, I can show you guys these. The headers for the car are done. The merge collectors are removable, which I thought would look super old school and period correct on this car. Shout out to Forrest, the man that fabricated these. You can see the welds right here at the flange. Just look like a robot did them. They're made out of stainless and <laughs> This thing's gonna sound so good. Before I can bolt these up to the side of the engine though, I have a broken stud and a bunch of missing studs I have to replace. And to add insult to injury, literally every single valve cover bolt, the head had snapped off because they're all rusty and the machine shop didn't remove any of this stuff when they rebuilt the engine. It's kind of, <sighs> whatever. I learned my lesson last time getting Walter's burn on my tits, so. I'm gonna cover up this time. Give me that, give me that, give me that nut. There's a nut. This is a much smaller nut, but that also gives me a lot more meat in case I screw up. It's the heat that's gonna make it come out. Okay. Yet again, another instance why I got a TIG welder first before a MIG welder, because I can do situations like this where I don't have to worry about splatter getting into critical areas. My first attempt failed, so I got the nut threaded all the way down as far as I can. I started out on the center of the stud to induce some heat in that first before moving outwards towards the bolt to fuse that to the stud. I think I'm gonna do it twice because I don't feel like that was enough. It's a little bit of a gap at the bottom still. And then while it's still glowing red hot, I'm gonna spray some flammable chemicals on it as well as try to blow out the flames with a welding mask on. Please, 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 please. <laughs> it turned. Yeah, it worked. That's gonna be so hot and I don't have gloves on. That's how smart I am. Tech tip, while you're doing this, keep in mind that most hardware is zinc coated and if you're welding it onto a stud and burning all that zinc off and breathing it in, super not good for you. That'll keep crap from getting in there. I could dunk these nuts into muriatic acid and it'll take all the zinc off. That's pretty cool, I'm burning all the zinc off the nuts. 
Rinse them off. Zincless nuts. Here it goes. Think it's going? I think I just broke off. Damn, I have just enough material now to try this one more time. And if not, it snaps, it's gonna be snapped flush off with the head. And I'm gonna have to drill it out. This is something that should have been done at a machine shop when the engine is completely tore apart. Because if I get any trash in the engine trying to do this 18 times, I'm gonna try turning down the current a little bit so it gets less hot. Before I go any further with the getting it hot method, I wanna try putting two nuts on, this is not a time for innuendos. I'm irritated if you can't tell. I lose, like, I'm specifically not mentioning the name of the shop that rebuilt this engine. I don't, that, that's not the whole point of this. I'm just upset and it's not okay. This is not okay. It's turning, but I feel like that's gonna just snap. I'm gonna try just heating the stud. How that made sense in my head without putting a nut on it first, is probably the zinc fumes getting to me. Needless to say, I quickly found out that I needed to screw a nut on it. And getting this foil tape to stick to the head so I don't get trashed down inside there is a nightmare. This is not working very well. Turning the amperage down did help. It didn't instantly just vaporize the nut and then I put the penetrant on the stud as fast as I could. That way it'll cool off the metal and shrink it back down. So hopefully that was enough where that will come out. Now, that's just gonna snap the nut off, I can already tell. Yep, snapped it again. It doesn't even remotely wanna try to turn that stud. Now that I knew this was possible in theory, I didn't want to go any further with my crappy Harbor Freight tap and die set and risk breaking off a tap into the cylinder head because then it's game over. I was age and this is what age does. They call metals tech for a stuck bolt. Because I lacked proper machinist grade tap and die set and also good quality drill bits, I asked Charlie if he could come over and help out with this tap and die extraction. Because if I screw one of these up, I literally have wasted nine months of having this engine rebuilt and waiting for it. It is the next morning and thanks to Metals Tech, AKA Charlie, I can continue working. So, since my junkyard engine has all genuine OE Denso sensors on it, if these are good, by all means, I'm reusing them because they're like $150 a piece. Well, this hardware looks super good too, so this will clean up nice and ultrasonic cleaner. Oh man, this one's super crusty. This stud is perfect, so I'll be able to reuse that one. I highly doubt this thing will even clean up. I don't even know if there's any point taking it out. I don't know if the ultrasonic cleaner can save this. <sighs> Lastly, this guy. And that's an engine that someone skipped oil changes on. Let's bake some bolts. Citrus based degreaser. On. Well, that nasty one's not terrible. This is the one that was all full of galvanic corrosion. The exhaust studs look brand new again, though. I don't even know if this is gonna fit. Nope, I'll have to do half and half. Crank up the heat. It's not loud decibel-wise, but I'm sure you can hear on the camera. That will mess your ears up. We got a brand new set of genuine Toyota exhaust manifold gaskets with some notes for fabrication. It's a little tricky doing this with the removable merge collector. I think I'm actually gonna replace the OE hardware with some copper nuts. I just like using those a lot better. A lot of this stuff is gonna be final assembly, but stuff like the headers and anything on the accessory drive, 
is test fit because I got to put the radiator and AC condenser in this thing along with the AC compressor and test fit a couple brackets. Once that's all good to go, then this is coming back out. I'm going to paint the engine bay. Stay. What the hell's going on here? I got lucky with the other side. This one's not as easy to install. Collector off. There you go. Just install it individually. Last tube. There. This would make installation really easy when it's in the car. And I'll put my collector back on. It probably seems like there wasn't a lot of progress in this video, but that's because there probably wasn't a lot of progress in this video because I had to keep dealing with stupid stuff like broken off stuck bolts because this engine came from a truck that was rotting in a snowy grave in the middle of New Hampshire. But that's the whole point of this progress, the project, progress. So again, big shout out to Forrest. He's one of the local viewers of this channel and he offered to fabricate these headers for me and obviously I paid him. But yeah, they came out like spaceship quality. This is, this is the kind of quality work I like to see. I just ran another batch of robot snacks through the deep fryer. I have to do this a lot over the next couple days to get the hardware up to spec for this. That was the whole purpose of why I bought this blown up 2UZ because it had mint condition hardware on it since it was from Arizona. So now those nuts and bolts can get cleaned up and reused on my dad's engine. And as far as my dilemma with the valve covers, I actually love the way these look with the natural marbling and stuff because they look super clean now and it just kind of flows with the engine. This looks period correct in an engine bay from 1970 other than the fact that it has a 4-cam with variable valve timing intelligent and variable intake runners and a bunch of other modern technologies, but don't worry about that. So in the next video, I got some more assembly I gotta do, a bunch of billet components for the front and also I gotta pull the timing belt back off because the cover that goes behind it that the plastic piece attaches to wasn't installed when so, yeah so anyway i'll see you guys soon with uh, another video thank you for watching bye